Howdy. So when I went to the United States 20 years ago, I met a lot of American friends. And the first question they asked me, where were you born? My answer, my truthful answer was, I was born in Kuwait. Then they see me filling some paperwork, and the paperwork will say nationality. I put Jordanian. Then they hear me talking about visiting my home city, Jerusalem. They get further confused. <laughs> then they listen to me talking about my days in Baghdad, studying in Al Jadriya. I get them even further confused. Then I noticed that I start losing my American friends because they thought that this guy has split personality <laughs> or lying. I had to explain simply I'm from the Middle East. And that's my story. And that's how most of us are. When I came to Qatar a few years ago, two construction workers came to do some work at my house. One of them asked me in Arabic, Sir, where are you from? I said, I'm from America. He said, Amriki, Amriki, Amriki? <laughs> I said, no, just one. <laughs> this story was inspired while I'm sitting here listening to my colleagues, but that's not what I'm here to tell you about. I'm here to talk with you about brain return. The return of brain to the Middle East, motivated of what's happening in Qatar. So this is the positive, the opposite of brain drain that we like to talk about. So thanks for the strategic emphasis in Qatar on research and education, we have seen significant return of very power brains back to Qatar and to the region. We are very proud of that. We often meet highly qualified colleagues with very, with very strong accomplishments who decided to come back in Qatar after spending very productive years in countries such as United States, Canada, Australia, and Europe. When I came to Qatar in 2007, many trusted friends back in the US advised me not to make the move. They called it career suicide. You know where these, most of these friends are now? Most of them are actually in Qatar. <laughs> this is very exciting. In fact, the problem I have now is how to keep them away from Qatar so I can keep my job. <laughs> the question is that we have our, to ask ourselves, ourselves, is it time to celebrate this achievement of brain return? I say, without taking away from the success so far, unfortunately, not yet. It's premature to celebrate this brain return. Scientists and academicians like myself are curious by their nature, and they like to do experiments, take data, analyze, and then make the conclusion. To many of us, what's happening here might be a very nice experiment that's worth observing and being part of for a short period of time. The challenge is not to bring people, scientists, to Qatar or to the region. The actual challenge is to have them stay and think long term. This is not easy at all because the Middle East does not have any clean record of being the place where dreams come true. And we need to reserve that, we need to reverse that thinking. Let me talk about two things. First, how do we have them stay and why? On the how part, will the first thing to do keep scientists, academicians, strong brain powers busy because they will leave if they, don't, if they get bored regardless of how much money we throw at them. Money will bring people to start new things, but will not keep them. I guarantee you will not keep them. Being busy in meaningful ways, feeling productive, is what's going to keep these people in Qatar and in the region. Because being productive and uh, feeling productive is fundamental to the nature of their existence, and they will not compromise on that. We cannot afford 
to have them get bored because simply they will leave. Many academicians keep one foot here and one foot in the place where they came from. In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with that initially. But need to create the ecosystem that makes them think long term and have, um, and have both feet here. It's risky to have scientists work with short-term goals. Then all the outcomes of the science of their work will also be short-term and will have very little impact, if any. We want them to think about careers, not jobs and money in Qatar. Reflecting on my own personal experience, I went to the United States more than 20 years ago, not only to do my PhD. I decided to leave <coughs> because I can see that there will be a new future and a better life. How did I know? I just had to look at those who did it before me. I had to go because my father, when he said goodbye to me, and this is a true story, he said, never come back. He was a very loving father who told me, do not come back. That changed 15 years ago. And he said, please come back. So I did. We need to create a similar model of what I went after for success and have people see beyond the job or degree in order to think and stay long term. I'm not saying that these are easy tasks, but we are kidding ourselves if we think there is anything easy in the Middle East. Now let's discuss why. Are you kidding me? We can't afford for this not to work. We really can't. It will set us back for many years and it will shut down one of the very few hopes that are remaining in the Middle East. On a personal level, it will be an egg smashed in the in middle of my face since I believe in it and I brag about it everywhere I go. I live in Qatar and we're making difference in this part of the world. This is, has to work because education and interest in science are human values and can unify people regardless of their cultures. It's because this interaction among cultures and backgrounds is the only way we can produce this forward thinking, smart young people, such as those organizing this event. When they come and meet me, came and meet me to talk about talking in this event, I feel jealous. These are very smart, very productive, forward thinking people. I was not among these people when I was their age. They are amazing because they are the product of unique interactions of ideas and cultures that make them think critically before they make choices. They are the product of what I heard Her Highness say in College Station, Texas in 2003 that we are going to create a, cult a place where meeting other civil where calls for meeting of other civilizations not, not melting into them. That's the moment when I was in College Station, Texas where I said maybe there's something I can go after there. To my fellow scientists and academici academicians, I say, we do have ethical responsibilities here. We cannot deal with this as business as usual. It's not a job only. We have to believe in it. We have to speak about it with pride and brag about it. We are in this together. Yes, there are frustrations, there are difficulties, there are moments where I wish I've never came here, and there are things that do not make sense to some of us. But who would deal with all these challenges if we don't? We have to accept all that things will be different than what we were used to. We have to redefine success to be successful. In the United States, I might define my success in science as the other paper, the other patent, the other this, the other that. Here I have to define my success. My success here is to start the first conference, to publish the first paper out of Qatar, to send my student to study in Caltech, and to study and send the next student to go to Stanford, and the next one, don't forget, Texas A&M. <laughs> Some here, <coughs> success here has to be part of making new things. That few, that few had the courage to be part of, and we had the courage to be part of it and make a change. Success is to establish legacy and not to accept making incremental, incremental changes to an already well-established system. Success is what Dr. Stelic talked about, increasing your fractal dimension. We will make it successful 
because my friends, we cannot afford otherwise. This has to succeed, and we are in it together. Thank you.